the personality of God. But we want to look at uh, the practical aspect of uh, knowing God. There's always uh, a battle to know truths about God. But people do not consider the most important thing, the practical aspect of knowing the truth about God. So I'd like us to bow for a word of prayer. And then we enter into the study. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, this evening, this nightly session. I pray that you be with us as we look into the word. Bless us and uh, let the spirit minister unto our soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The book of John chapter 17, verse 3. The book of John chapter 17, verses 3. The Bible says like this. First of all, I'll start from verse 1 because... I don't want to pick it from uh, the, the middle part of it. It says, uh, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son. Yes, no, I do it again. I cannot see more than a polo more at any water. That's a job for you, would it won't? That thy son also may be any as thou hast given him. Mondomini do for money me and give my mature that he may give life to as many as come to him. Mondo omitted do for money me and give my mature. The burden of Jesus Christ uh, is to give eternal life. And, she won't give much and then verse 3 says, verse 3 says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The knowing of the true God, and his son, we are told it's eternal life. It is not something just to be brushed off. In it, it contains eternal life. So, well, people make a lot of debates about the truth about uh, God and his son. We should be asking ourselves what implication does this truth carry with it? Is it just having a knowledge that uh, there is only one God and His Son? By the way, the devil knows that there is one true God and he trembles. Yet he's not converted. And so we may have the truth about the father and the son. At the end of the day and tremble about it. But never have eternal life. And so, why is it important to know about the truth about the Father and the Son. Our, uh, our knowledge about the God we serve, we, we all have a definite, clearly defined opinion about God's character. What you believe about the God you serve, it will affect your attitudes, your feelings, and your values. And some of us have been born with a bend or a false concept about God. And so it is important we know about the true God and his son. Why? Second Peter 
the book of second peter chapter 1 verses 2 we are just laying a foundation and we'll come to some things to do with the father and the son the book of second peter chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 why is it important to know about the true God and his son? Simon, Simon Peter, servant and uh, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained life precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And Simon Petro, Mesumba, Kendo Jaote Maria Su Christo, and Ikoni Jogo Mose Nwango Yema Nengu Nedwum Marongi Yewa. So you find that the knowledge of the Father and the Son brings righteousness. Nikoro Ngeyo Nito Yesu Enunga Tu Wongye Nunga Nima Nengi Mape Loket Kare. And what, what we need in our life is the righteousness of God to have eternal life. If you have a false concept about God, it means that you cannot reproduce the righteousness of God. Look at verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So what does the knowledge of God and his son bring? What does it bring? Grace and peace are multiplied. Which means if you have a false concept about God, grace and peace are not multiplied. By the way, why is grace and uh, peace multiplied when you know the Father and the Son? You come to the knowledge that God cannot withhold anything for to his children. He who gave his son will never withhold anything from him. The same way he gave his son is the same way he'll give us everything. We are told this is eternal life. First John chapter 5. Look at first John chapter 5. I'm looking at verse 1. We are looking at the personality of God and actually what is the practical implications in our life. The Bible tells that there is one true God and Jesus Christ whom we have sent. And this knowledge, one, it brings righteousness. Two, it brings uh, grace. And three, peace. And so, verse 1 says, Whoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Do you understand verse 1? We have the one who begat and the one who is begotten. Who is the one that begat? The what? We have the one who begat and the one who is begotten. So who begat? The father. And the begotten is who? Is Jesus Christ, and he says that whoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Now, if you have never looked at this verse, I want you to compare it with the, the book of Matthew chapter 16. Hold your finger there, we are coming back to 1 John 5. John chapter 6. Whoever that believes that Jesus Christ 
Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Jo, the book of Matthew chapter 16. The greatest confession. From verse 13, it says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philip, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, is? I am. And many people had answers. People had different answers in the room. If somebody will ask you, who is Jesus Christ? I believe we will have varied answers. Here. And so I post to you, who is Jesus Christ? And I have answers. Here. Or I ask the way Jesus asked. Whom do you hear the people say I am? Because this is the question that was asked to disciples and is still asked to us today. We are in a Bible study, no preaching. The son of the living God. The son of the living God, another answer. Uh, that is what you hear people say. Who else have heard people talking about Jesus? What did they say he is? Yes. Yeah. What do you hear people say Jesus is? The son of Nail. Those are the answers that Jesus was looking for. Another one. The Savior. And so Jesus takes a lot of answers here. They said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say Elias and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then verse 15, he says, he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And then Jesus says, Blessed art thou, Simon, the son of Jonah. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And when they were turning in a petrol, and then Wanda Na and Wanda Nina Gaya Canisana, and the Ranga Cardiomotok no gang. So the revelation that Christ, thou art Christ, the Son of the Living God, is the foundation that the church is built on and the gates of hell cannot prevail upon. Why can Satan not uh, 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 cannot break this foundation? Why is it that he cannot prevail on it? Whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is the son is born of God. Satan cannot overcome people who are righteous. And this foundation that Peter has uh, revealed that the church is laid on is what brings righteousness, peace, and grace. Because it uh, really shows uh, the love, the depth of the love that God has for us. Verse 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. So this foundation that Christ is, is the son of God actually uh, it is the <coughs> victory that overcometh the world. Verse 5, look at verse 5. Uh, where's a Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? 
That was uh, first, first John chapter five, verse five. Verse five. Jana moko ngo a bit was a bit. Na no malo yo pain. Makmana en mo yeni yesu en wod nyasai. Who is that that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So, actually, uh, this revelation that uh, there is one true God and there is the Son of God makes us be overcomers. It is not only a theoretical truth, but uh, if you believe Christ is the Son of God, it means this, eternal life. Because, look, look at what uh, it says in verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his son. He that uh, believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. And we are told that uh, verse 12, and this is the record that God gave his, God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. So if we have the son in our hearts, then it comes with this eternal life that God has given us. We shall be looking at possessors of eternal life tomorrow. and see how having the son and believing in his son, we have this eternal life. Why is this important? Christ prayed that for power to reveal the divine character of his mission. Christ prayed that for power to reveal uh, the divine character of his uh, mission. When he came to the world, his main work was to reveal his father. <laughs> and when we have him in our lives, then actually we have that eternal life. I'd like to read the something in self ages page 380 paragraph one when uh, christ came on this earth the people the pharisees did not see him as the son of god they expected someone different from uh, uh who Christ was. And we are told that unbelief was taking possession of their minds and hearts. Love of honor had blinded them. They knew that Jesus was hated by the Pharisees and they were eager to see him exalted as though he should be. This was the disciples got doubtful even about Jesus Christ. To be united with a teacher who could work mighty miracles and yet be uh, reviled as deceivers was a trial they could no, they could ill endure. Will Christ never sat his authority as a king? 
the, the false conceptions about God and Christ made the Jewish people actually sacrifice, uh, crucify Jesus. Christ. And that war has not ended. Look at the book of John chapter 16. But there we are looking at the practical aspect of knowing the one true God. John chapter 16, from verse 1, it says, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yeah, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Lack of knowing the father and his son makes you persecute those who are in truth. Are you seeing why it is important to know about the father and the son? We, 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 we found out that it brings righteousness. Peace and grace are matter. And now we are finding that we are finding that uh, lack of knowing it will make you be in the group that will persecute those who know the truth. Look at uh, testimonies to the church, volume eight. Let us read together. The knowledge of God as Revealing Christ is the knowledge that all who are saved must do what? Ninge on your side, Kaka or Hell no go do from Christo, Mano in a magic chemi de Warnaka baby go. It is the knowledge that works what? Transformation and transformation. I'll be challenging you this week. Has your knowledge about the father and his son brought transformation of the character? Or you are one of these people who say that these are apostates. You are the first one to throw words at others. The devil knows that we have one true God. And he trembles. But he is lost forever. Your knowledge about the Father and the Son should bring transformation, should bring eternal life, not eternal domination. In fact, Peter says that it is uh, this knowledge should make you be meek and humble in answering the hope you have of your faith. Look at First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three, quickly. So we are not just studying about the one true God and His Son. It has to bring something in our lives. But if you find yourself you are lacking this character. Then uh, start reviewing your, your life. How is it that you have this knowledge and then you don't have the character that comes? First Peter chapter 3. It says verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good concern that whereas they speak evil of you as of evil doers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. So has this knowledge brought meekness in your life? Have 
has it brought the fear of the Lord in your heart? That is why we are told that the knowledge of God as revealed in Jesus Christ is the knowledge that all who are saved must have. It is the knowledge that works transformation of character. Now it says this knowledge received will do what? Recreate the soul in the image of God. What is the greatest thing that we are battling with by the What do human beings struggle a lot with? What is it? Uh, we are uh, struggling against the devil. No, 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 no. That is not the thing that human beings struggle a lot with. We are struggling with sin. No, the word starts with S, but it's not sin. It is sin, but that's not the word I'm looking for. So, self. <laughs> the greatest enemy is self. There is no one who can. The only thing that can defeat you is self. And that is the very thing we have to overcome. The knowledge of the Father and Christ uproots that selfishness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What will you withhold from that knowledge? After coming to that knowledge, what will you as a human being withhold? If God can give everything for my life, why should I not give everything and give up everything for him? That is why we are told when we read this thing, it will recreate the soul in the image of God, that selfless God. Uh, it will impart to the whole being a spiritual power that is divine. Those who have known about the Father and the Son, do you possess these things? Are we possessing these attributes? Or we just shout there is one God and there is his son. And so we are told that uh, whoever has the son has life in himself. There is the knowing of the father and the son and this is eternal life. And we are told that whoever has the son has life in himself. Now we are told in John chapter 5 verses 25 and 26. As the father has life in himself so he had given even the son to have the life in himself. And what does Christ do? It says that it is the grace that Christ implants in the soul which creates in man enmity against this uh, against Satan. Without this converting grace and renewing power, man will continue to be captive of Satan, a servant ever ready to his bidding. So the father gives the son his life. And whoever has the son, he has this seed of the son implanted in him. So as the son overcame, whoever has his life becomes an overcome. That is why we read in 1 John chapter 5. He 
who is he that overcometh the world? He that believes that Christ is the Son. Because this belief comes as a package with the grace to overcome sin. This grace is enlightening of the Holy Spirit. The latter class had received the grace of God, the regenerating, enlightening power of the Holy Spirit, which renders his word a lamp to the feet and a light to the path. Hebrew. What, what, what are the implications of believing Jesus Christ is the Son of God? So that you may possess his life. The book of Hebrews 9.14. Hebrews 9.14. Uh, Let us look at it. It says, What's your name? How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And so, by receiving his son, accepting that truth, we come into possession with the eternal spirit. And what does the eternal spirit do? What does the verse say? <laughs> it purges your conscience from dead works so that you may be able to serve God. The reception of the Son of God is the reception of the very life of God. And as God is sinless, then we become sinless. In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And I'll pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. They shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is bitterness for his first. That uh, those who receive his son, he shall pour out his spirit of grace. <laughs> Look at 2 Corinthians 13, 14 on the screen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So we receive this grace when we receive his son. By the way, uh, it is only truth that sanctifies. Error does not sanctify. And that is why we are told that the witness of God is greater than the witness of men. Whoever has the witness of God in himself then has eternal life. When the laborers have abiding, have an abiding Christ in their own soul. The Christ it is not just a theory, okay, no baka, baka. but uh, the receiving of that unselfishness of God in their heart. Look at that verse, uh, that uh, quote once again. When the laborers have an abiding Christ in their own souls, no. when what? When all selfishness is dead. When there is no rivalry, no strife for the supremacy, when oneness exists, when they sanctify themselves so that love for one another is seen and felt, then the showers of the grace of the Holy Spirit will just as surely come upon them as that God's promise will never fail in one jot or title. So the reception of the son is the crucifying of what? Of selfishness. The reception of the Son of God 
It is the uprooting of all selfishness. Look at this, Minister of Healing, page 247. Abiding peace. True rest of spirit has but how many sources? One source. It was of this that Christ spoke when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Now, look at this. John 14, 27 says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. This peace is not something that he gives apart from himself. It is in Christ and we can receive it only by receiving him. Now let us go back to the book of First John chapter, Second uh, Peter chapter one verse two. We are seeing that uh, by receiving Christ, uh, we receive this abiding peace, which is. Uh, receiving himself which is receiving the holy spirit second peter one two which we read grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent. this knowledge multiplies grace and peace and this is the peace that christ speaks in john chapter 14 verse 27 we know all what John chapter 14 is all about. What is it all about? Forgotten. What does John chapter 14 talk about? Oh, oh, she wanted to give us the three angels' messages. John 14 is about uh, the promise of the comfort. But he starts by saying that I'm the way, the truth, I'm the truth, the way, and life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And in verse 17, he says that. Uh, uh, I'll be in you. I'll dwell with you, but I'll be in you. I'll not leave you comfortless, verse 18. That I'll be in you. I'll not leave you comfortless. And then this is the piece in 14.27 that he promises. But we have just found that whoever does not believe on it, then the, he will be able to persecute others. And he says that there's coming a time they shall put you out of the synagogue because they did not know my father in me. It is only through justification that we can obtain this peace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. For we saw in the book of uh, uh, First John, First John, uh, where we were looking at, um, no, Second Peter chapter one. Sorry, Second Peter chapter one. Petro Mara Second Peter chapter one, verse one. Second Peter chapter one, verse one. Achen was a chen. 
Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Simon Simon Peter misumba kendo jaote ma Jesus Christo andiko ne jogo mose nwango ye manengo ne duong marom gi ye wa kum tich makare manya sacho gi jawaro Yesu Christo. Now you wonder how justification is connected with the uh, righteousness, uh, knowledge of the Son of God. The, the knowledge of the Father and the Son brings righteousness. And this is uh, the whole theme of justification. To give us the righteousness of God. And uh, you look at uh, look at uh, the book of uh, the book of Acts. When you learn the book Matthew, Acts chapter eight, thirty-seven. Did you hear about the West Pradega area? We are looking at the personality of God. What are the implications of having this knowledge? Has it brought righteousness in your life or you are still lacking it? Are you still the bitter person? Here we have Philip ministering to Ayuna. We are talking about receiving this righteousness, which is part of justification. Look at uh, 8.37. After they have been learning, the eunuch and the Philip, they reach at some place. And says, and Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In fact, verse 36 says, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, so, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? So, let me ask you a question. What was hindering the eunuch from being baptized? <laughs> For a slip. What was hindering this man from being baptized? Philip answers him, and Philip said, Philip if you believe with all thine heart, thou mayest. And what did he answer? I believe Jesus Christ is the Son. And, and then he was baptized. This was a prerequisite for baptism. And this man, without doing any works that could commend him to God, was justified just by believing that Christ is the Son of God. He was baptized and received justification. And yet, this is the truth that is shut from many of us. We wonder why we struggle with righteousness and justification. But we are told that this knowledge brings righteousness. And so it may be possible that the reason why we are still struggling with righteousness, we don't believe in Jesus Christ as the Son. And uh, until we come to this knowledge, unless we believe in his son. 
How can we come into harmony with God? How shall we receive his likeness unless we obtain a knowledge of him? It is this knowledge that Christ came into the world to reveal unto us. This is the record that we are being given. And this knowledge will bring uh, righteousness in our hearts. Just look at a few things and then we close. We go back to the book of First John chapter 5. The knowledge of God and his son. It is important to, to read these things and uh, think about them, reflect what you are reading. First John chapter 5. Verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have what? Eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Verse 14. This knowledge. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of Him. And then verse 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding. That we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the, the true God and eternal life. Verse 21 says, Little children, keep yourself from idols. The knowledge of the Father and His Son will keep us from idolatry. Many people have conception, misconceptions about God. They end up in idolatry. We don't want to be worshippers of false gods. This is eternal life. That they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom have said. So we are told it is certain constant study to keep the minds of men occupied with things, those things which will prevent them from obtaining the knowledge of God. The meager views which so many have had of the exalted character and office of Christ have narrowed their religious experience and have greatly hindered their progress in the divine. And so God is calling us back again. That the more we know of him, <coughs> the more we receive of the latter. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. He's going forth, is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain, 
and form a rain unto the earth. Nike no obiro biro no mana kaka kot kaka kot opon kot kot chwere chwere pen. You know this uh, revelation of the Father and the Son. Ngani nge yoko muoro biwo bine. It brings refreshing. Okay, no no wa chwech manye ne. And so if we disbelieve in this truth that the Lord has given unto us. Koro ko wada gi ye di ri manya sa okay lo man. Then we miss the refreshing from that. Ne kato koro mano mi ye chwech manye cha tu bre. Let us read our, our last verse. Wa sa mo wes mo. The book of Acts chapter 3. Eh chichi jo cha de. Before we go into those uh, minute things about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us just conclude here uh, the implications of knowing this. Acts chapter 3, from verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. Converted from what? All this falsehood we have about God and his son. And this repenting, your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 20, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets in the world began. So as we repent, from the misconceptions and falsehood we have known about the Father and His Son. The, the times of refreshing comes from there. And who is received? Jesus Christ. He must come in our hearts first before we see Him in the clouds of the That is where we are told this is a eternal life, <laughs> that they may know thee the only true God, in Jesus Christ whom he has sent. We receive righteousness, grace and peace is multiplied, and selfishness is, uh, uh, is slain in our lives. <laughs> and then we possess the character of God. And we are told this is eternal. <laughs> and so may the Lord be with us. Those who have been saying that uh, we know of the Father and we know the Son. The only thing that can show that you know the Father and the Son is to have their character. Don't have this knowledge that Satan has this one true God and this Jesus Christ. He trembles at this truth. He trembles at this. Yet he's lost forever. May we not fall in that group. May it reproduce meekness and fear in our lives. This is the truth that should humble Christians. And so we shall be looking at these things as the week progresses. And then look at the sanctuary and see what the Lord is speaking. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us as we uh, spend uh, this night. We go to, to sleep. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for thou hast withheld nothing unto us. We know that this is eternal life and uh, it should produce righteousness in our lives. Help us to receive this truth because truth sanctifies. May they will continue to be done in our lives and even as we return to sleep, Lord, we pray that you be with us. Thank you and uh, thank you for giving Jesus Christ the comforter. Your will be done now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.